Welcome back to the .CMS Content Contributor course. In this video, we're going to talk about one of the most important things that happens in the background of .CMS, and that is taxonomy. One of the most important decisions that will be made when setting up our .CMS implementation is how we label and organize our content. Now, as a content contributor, you might think this doesn't have much to do with you, since some of this will be set up before you even get started with .CMS by your web devs and your administrators. However, you will have an active and continuous role in taxonomy and understanding how content works together and relates to one another. So it's important that we understand three particular features, tags, categories, and relationships. Using these three features to the best of their ability will allow us to ensure that we can more easily create dynamic content pulls and display information appropriate to our pages and users, and even have a personalized experience for our end users. Now, usually taxonomy will be planned ahead of time, at least somewhat, as far as how we organize our folders, how we organize the content, and all of that will be based on our exact content needs. But when it comes to your role that you'll play as a content contributor, let's start with tags. Tags are something that we as content contributors will be using often. So let's take a look at a piece of content and the tags associated with it. I'll click on activities and let's take a look at snowboarding. If we scroll down, we'll find our tags field. We can see snowboarding and winter enthusiast. Now these are tags that are of course relevant to the content. We'll see snowboarding of course is directly related to snowboarding and winter enthusiast is definitely related to something like snowboarding. However, winter enthusiast is being used in a few other places here in our site. And we'll talk about exactly how in a little bit. But what if we thought of some other tags that we might want to use to relate this content to other pieces of content? All we need to do is click in our tags field and start typing. If I wanted to add snow, you'll notice we immediately get an autocomplete with a number of recommendations. Snow, snow sports, snowboarding, snowmobile, snowmobiling, snowshoeing, and not all of this will necessarily be relevant. But of course we could add snow, we could add snow sports. Those seem pretty relevant. What if I wanted to add a new tag that doesn't yet exist when I search for it? What if I search for extreme sports? You'll notice we don't get a result, but if I type it and hit enter, now we have created an extreme sports tag. Once this content has been published, I can go ahead and use that extreme sports tag anywhere else I'd like in the .cms backend. This means that we can actively contribute to our site's taxonomy in real time. We can add new tags wherever relevant. That being said, it's important to ensure that we're adding tags that are helpful and that are not duplicates. It's very easy for me to add additional tags that are very similar, like say, extreme sport instead of extreme sports. If we have one tag on one item and a different tag on another, then .cms might not know that these things are related. So make sure that if we are typing in something, that we go ahead and use the auto returned option as opposed to typing the rest of it out if possible. Of course, if we're adding something new, then nothing will return. Just make sure that you use your discretion to create tags only where necessary and helpful. Now tags will allow us to do a lot of things with content. Once we've added these tags, I can go ahead and publish this. And now that we've added these tags, this can be searched for on the front end. This allows us to on the fly ensure that we can find the content we're looking for and our users can find it as well. There are other ways we can use tags though. Like I mentioned before, personalization is one special way that we can use tags. That's exactly why we have this winter enthusiast tag. Let's take a look back at our site. I'm going to click the X. I'll open a new tab 
and go to our demo site. In the top right corner of the page, we see a user icon. If we click the dropdown, we'll see a couple of different personas. Now this is not a normal way of implementing personas. We simply have them accessible here so that you can see how they change to demonstrate the feature in .cms. But you wouldn't normally implement them like this in your own real world implementation. Instead, you would want to make sure that users don't actually see these selections being made. That way, it does truly feel as though the site has been tailored just for them. You'll see that we have a default, eco enthusiast, ocean enthusiast, and winter enthusiast. These personas and the way that personalization works will not likely be set up by you as a content contributor. But again, this is another feature that is helpful to understand when creating content for our various personas. As you can see, we are anticipating that we will have a number of different types of travelers visiting Travelux. Here we can see an eco-enthusiast. If I click on this, we can see the experience on our site has been tailored to someone who is an eco-enthusiast. We see Costa Rica, a sanctuary for the senses, and if I scroll down, we'll actually see specific activities and even products tailored just to our eco-enthusiast. If I scroll back up and choose a different persona, like our ocean enthusiast, we'll get a totally different experience again, French Polynesia, for instance. And finally, our winter enthusiast. So how does all this work? Well, using tags, as well as some other information that we might capture, we can deliver a personalized experience based on the other sites that a user goes to, the various pages that a user might visit and content they might interact with on our site, the location that they're visiting from, and various other things about our user that we might capture, including what language is their browser in, what browser are they using, what time zone are they in, things like that. So using all this information, we can build a personalized experience just for this user. If we can show someone what they're most interested in, why wouldn't we? So using tags to organize our content so we can do something like this is extremely helpful. It also allows us to find content using search based on our tags. Let's take another look at tags on the back end in a way that you might not see them. I'm going to go back to our back end and go to content model. These are tools that you might not have access to as a content contributor, but you'll see that we have a tags tool. I can click on this and look at and manage all of the tags that have been created on my site. Just to show you, if I search for extreme, we see that the extreme sports tag was in fact created as a tag and can be used on all of our sites. So it's that easy to add new tags, but our web developers and administrators might actually create a bunch of tags ahead of time just for us to use. That way we don't have to create them all ourselves. Just know that you can create tags, but with great power comes great responsibility. Make sure that you are creating tags that are appropriate and you're not duplicating tags. Tags are excellent, but they're not the only method of segregating and organizing our content. Next, let's look at categories. Here in the Content Model Tools group, I'll show you categories. Categories are essentially a drop-down list of predefined labels. This allows us to essentially bake our organization directly into our content types. Now, categories, unlike tags, are usually predefined by our webmasters. So keep that in mind. We won't be able to actively add new categories in real time. However, of course, if we see a need for it, it's best to reach out to your webmaster or administrator to add new categories as you might see fit. Categories are more for organizing in ways that we can foresee when initially setting up our organization. As you might recall, tags we can set up on the fly and add new ones too, whereas categories are predetermined by our webmasters or administrators. We'll see that we have a few categories here and you'll notice it says top level because we can actually nest categories within each other, which is something that we can't do with tags. If I click on categories, we'll see here a number of different categories for products, backcountry, hiking, kids, and notice here we see snowboarding. 
Now, this essentially might be a duplicate between our tag and our category. So it's important to understand what is best to be using here. In this case, we have both for a reason, but you may only need to use one. So categories allow us to actually organize our content with various labels. Let's take a look at our content and look at products. Here, if I select our K2 men's mind bender skis, we can scroll down and see categories. Here we have a snow category. Now we could click here to actually select other categories and we could choose them by using the navigation here by clicking the plus sign to expand or going back using our breadcrumbs. So here we see snow. We don't have any categories within it, but it's important to note that we can nest categories. Going back to my top level though, we don't really need to add any of these others, except we could add say outdoor if we wanted to. I could select outdoor and it has been added. Then I can simply close the window and we see the outdoor category has been added. However, whether or not this product will fit under multiple categories is important to consider. Since this is a product and we want to make sure it's easily found by our users while they are navigating through our store, then we may not want to add multiple categories. Let's remove the outdoor category. So tags can be added on the fly ad hoc by just typing into the field. Categories are created beforehand and are added from a selected list. Now let's talk about our third and final taxonomy feature we'll be covering during this video. That is relationships. If I close this window, and I won't save my changes. I'm going to go back to destinations. Let's take a look at Colorado and the Rockies. Scrolling down here, I'll find a relationship field. You'll see that it's called featured activities. So we have some activities that we might want to feature for the destination of Colorado and the Rockies. These two things are related. And in this case, we can see that we might have multiple featured activities that are related to Colorado and the Rockies, skiing, cross country skiing, snowboarding, snowmobiling. We could also relate additional content here by clicking relate and choosing relate to relate existing content or relate new content to actually create a new piece of content related to this destination. If I click relate, I can now search through and find any content that I might deem relevant to this destination. Now, Colorado and the Rockies might actually have some whitewater rafting. It just might not be best for wintertime, but maybe I still want to show this when it's summertime. So I can go ahead and check the box and choose to relate white and choose to relate whitewater rafting as well by scrolling back up to the top and clicking relate. Now whitewater rafting has also been related to Colorado and the Rockies. We can always remove this by clicking the little trash can to remove that relation. Now we won't usually be creating relationships ourselves, but there are a few things that are helpful to understand when we are relating content. So let's take a look at the back end of this. I'm going to close this window and now we'll go back to our content model and go to our content types. Here I'll select our destination. And if I scroll down, we'll actually find our activities relationship field. We know it's relationship because of this icon and it says it here on the bottom right. Now I can click on our activities and here we can see how the relationship is created. We can see that this relationship is categorized as a many to many. And this is what we call cardinality. Essentially, how do these two pieces of content relate to one another? We'll talk more about this in a second, but since it is called many to many, then we know that there could be many destinations and many activities all related to one another. We'll talk about this more in a second, but you can see here below, we actually have a little map showing how destination and activity are related. Destination is the parent in this case, and activity is the child. 
Now, again, this is a little bit out of the scope, but I'm going to click cancel and we'll go to our activity content type. Here, if I scroll down, you'll notice we don't have a relationship field. So the relationship is purely existing from the destination side. However, we could add that same relationship here as a field if we needed to. If I scroll down, find my relationship field and drag it in, then I could go ahead and add our destinations. This, however, would not be a new relationship. It would be an existing relationship. I could select that relationship, the one that currently exists, destination, activities, many to many, and then we could save it. But I want to show you cardinality. If I go back to new, we have multiple options, one to many, many to many, one to one, and many to one. This might sound like a lot, but it's actually pretty simple when you think about it. When we're talking about a many to many relationship like we have here, then we could have multiple different activities or many activities in a single destination like Colorado and the Rockies. We know that we do. We have skiing, snowmobiling, snowboarding, etc. But those same activities could exist in other destinations or many destinations. So we might find that these things match up in multiple different places. That's when a many-to-many -many relationship makes sense. In the case that only one destination will have only one activity, and that activity will only exist within that destination, that would be a one-to-one. -one. However, if we might have many different activities, but they only exist in this one destination, then it might be a one-to-many. Now, of course, the one-to-many and many-to-one are essentially the same thing, just swapped based on the parent and child or the direction of this relationship. So understanding how those relationships work and how different content can relate to one another is helpful. Hopefully that makes sense. But as always, if you need a little bit more information, do go check out our documentation site. Now I'll click cancel. And let's actually go back to our site once more. Those relationships are used to display content as well. Here I'm in my winter enthusiast persona. If I scroll down, we'll see that we're only seeing activities that are relevant to our winter enthusiast. Now these are all based on tags, but if we're talking about our destinations, I'll click here and I'll choose Colorado and the Rockies. Here, if we scroll down, we see our featured activities, and these are based entirely on that relationship. Skiing, cross-country skiing, snowboarding, and snowmobiling. Those four that we saw in our relationship. So hopefully this gave you a slightly better understanding of how exactly taxonomy works from the content contributor end. Again, tags are something that we can both use and apply in real time while creating and modifying content. They're helpful for organizing different content that can be searched through and for creating personalization. Categories are something that's created in advance by our webmasters or administrators, and they are essentially a list of various labels that we can apply to content. Finally, relationships allow us to connect content to each other based on that relationship, such as in this case with our destinations and activities. This allows us to display content that is related to the content that we're currently displaying and allow that content to interact with each other in a way that makes sense. As always, and as I've mentioned many times, do please go review this in the documentation site if you have any questions at all.